In this video we'll learn how to choose the correct spindle speeds for a variety of machining operations. So if you use machine tools of any description then at some point you're going to want to work out the correct cutting speed. Now it doesn't matter if you're using lathe turning, milling or even simple drilling operations, the same basic principle applies and it all revolves around the same formula. But before we get into any formulas or maths, let's look at the basic principles that you need to understand to get a general feel for cutting speeds. So the smaller the bit of spinning metal, the faster you need to run the spindle. The reason why I say spinning metal rather than cutter is in a lathe, it's actually the stock that rotates. Whereas in a milling cutter or a drill, it's the drill bit or milling cutter that rotates. So the smaller the thing that spins, the faster it needs to go. So the next thing to consider is the hardness of the material. The softer the material, the faster you run it. So this plastic will be run with a faster spindle speed than say a steel or an aluminium or something crazy hard like Inconel. The opposite is true for cutting tools. So the harder the cutting tool, the faster you run it. So carbides are run much faster than a high speed steel. So remember, hard cutting tools and soft materials both require high speeds. This tri-cut prototyping wax is so soft you can actually scratch it with your fingernail. So we ran it at absolutely top whack. This was run at about 2,500 RPM. So now we have the basics down, we need to know how actually to calculate various speeds for different situations. And it all revolves around this formula. So let's break it down. The VC is known as the cutting speed. And that basically is in imperial surface feet per minute or in metric it's meters per minute and that's given for a combination of materials for example you'll have high speed steel cutters working in aluminium or carbide cutters working in steel or some various combination of cut material and coatings for that matter with different materials and you can look that up in a chart the uh, the age old is the Zeus charts quite often apprentices are issued with these when they start but you can look them up online the uh, engineering workshop I used to teach in actually had it pinned up to the wall for various values pi is the uh, the standard number 3.14 and so on use the value in your calculator d is the diameter of the workpiece in millimeters N is the actual spindle speed. This is what you're generally interested in for your machine tool. That's what you're actually going to change either on your DRO if you've got a fancy enough machine or on the gearbox, just pick the nearest one. And the thousand is just simply an integer and that is effectively a fudge factor which um, turns the diameter in millimeters into meters per minute. This is all based off an angular velocity formula. Okay, so the way that the formula is presented here is in a bit of a strange format, it um, it's allows you to work out the cutting speed. Now, what is more useful is to work out this value n. Nine times out of ten, you're actually going to want to know what value you want to put your machine in. So let's just rearrange this. So we'll have VC times a thousand divided by pi d is equal to n, which is the spindle speed. So quite often you'll see this written as something like this, a thousand cutting speed over pi d equals RPM. And there's various um, iterations of this, depending on exactly whether you're going to use radius or surface feet per minute, etc. But for our case, this is going to be fine. So let's do an example. Let's have a, um, a 10 mil drill bit in high speed steel. Uh, and we're going to drill into um, an aluminium alloy. So we would just simply look at a table. Now this is a much abbreviated table. We're going to look at the high speed column here. And we're going to look up here. Now we've got 80 to 100. Now if in doubt, use uh, the, a middle value. So in this case, I'm just going to pick something approximately in the middle. Well, exactly in the middle, I suppose, which is 100. So it would be 1,000 times 100 divided by pi d. Now d is the diameter of the cutter and that's going to be in 10 mil in this case. If we didn't have this thousand uh, here then we would have to convert that to meters. So let's do some cancelling. So that's just going to be there. So we'll have 10,000 divided by pi is equal to 
3,183 RPM. Now generally you'll find these do seem a little bit on the high side, but these are under ideal cutting uh, conditions, so generally you'll end up rounding down a little bit. In other words, in this particular situation, it's probably telling us to run our, uh, our uh, spindle at whatever the max speed is on the spindle. Let's do a slightly more uh, sensible example, which is we're going to be using a carbide um, lathe tool to make a cut on a 100 millimeter diameter shaft. So we've got a 100 mil diameter shaft. So D is 100. We're using carbide. We're using uh, steel, which has in carbide a surface speed of, um, let's choose a rough middle value. Let's go for 65-ish. There we have it. Diameter equals 100 mil. So in this particular case, with a 100 mil piece of steel, um, with a carbide cutter in the lathe, We've got 206.9 RPM. Obviously, in a lathe gearbox, you would just select the nearest value to that. So there we have two examples. You can see how quickly things can get out of hand in softer materials. On a standard um, pillar drill, that's going to be very, very fast. You just run it at top speed. But on a machining centre, you could actually probably dial that in and get perfect cutting conditions. On a lathe, however, um, we've got a larger diameter workpiece, so we've ended up with a much slower um, RPM despite using a hard material combination. So if you're new to machining, I hope this was some useful content for you and I'm going to leave you with a bit of a thought experiment. Here are three different cutting conditions that I want you to consider and leave your answers in the comments as to what you would do. Use whatever resources you would like. Uh, so if you've got your own Zeus charts, use that. Otherwise, just use a chart off the internet. And uh, let us know any tips you have for selecting cutting conditions on your machines. And if you like these kind of videos, do like, subscribe and comment. And we'll see you in the next video.